Hello and welcome everyone for today's upcoming Medi-Cal enrollment changes for seniors that you'll be joining us. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Roxana Lara and I'm a program manager here at Unlock 30th Street Senior Center. We're excited to be hosting this event today and sharing important information about Medi-Cal changes that may be impacting the way you receive your health care next year. We've got two presentations from the agenda today. Tiffany Win Cho from Justice and Aging will give us a presentation on what to expect from these upcoming Medi-Cal changes. And then Natalie Ortega from Unlock Pace will give a quick overview of the Unlock Pace program, which is one enrollment option for seniors with Medi-Cal and Medicare under this new Medi-Cal initiative. A few housekeeping items before we get started. First, we are going to be recording this presentation, so feel free to turn off your video or put a sticky note over your camera if that's your preference. Second, our presenters are here to answer your questions. We will have time for Q&A after each presentation. If you have questions that come up during the presentation, feel free to put them into the chat and we'll be sure to address them or we'll give you the opportunity to ask questions directly when we get to Q&A time. Please keep yourselves on mute until we ask you to unmute yourself to ask your questions. And with that, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our speaker, Tiffany Wen Cho is a senior attorney with Justice and Aging, a national nonprofit organization that uses the power of law to fight senior poverty by securing access to affordable health care, economic security, and the courts. Her work on the health team is focused on older adults, dually eligible for Medicare and Medi-Cal benefits in California. Thank you, Tiffany, for joining us this morning. I'll turn it over to you to get started. Thank you, Roxana. I'm gonna share my screen. All right. Um, so thank you everybody for joining. Like Roxana said, I am a senior staff attorney at Justice and Aging. Um, we are a national organization. We are a, um, a nonprofit law firm. So we work on policy to improve the lives of older adults um, with limited resources. And we primarily focus our efforts on people who have been marginalized and excluded from justice, such as women, people of color, LGBTQ individuals, and people with limited English proficiency. So for today's agenda, I'm going to cover some key pieces of CalAIM, which is a state government initiative that is um, currently underway. There are some uh, changes that are coming in January 2023, so we're just a couple of months away that I'm going to cover today um, that mostly affect uh, older adults. So we'll talk a little bit about CalAIM itself, the enrollment of the enrollment of dual eligibles into Medi-Cal managed care, the increase to the Medi-Cal asset limit that happened earlier this year, and then some resources. So if you have questions, or if questions come up in the future, local agencies that may be able to provide you some guidance. So first, what is CalAIM? So CalAIM stands for California Advancing and Innovating Medi-Cal. It's the acronym for this state initiative, the state program or plan, you might call it, that is currently underway. It's taking place over a series of years and the government the Department of Healthcare Services. They are the state agency responsible for the Medi-Cal program, and they are the ones putting into, into place this state plan. Their goal is to standardize enrollment into Medi-Cal managed care, as well as the benefits that are within Medi-Cal managed care plans with the goal of improving care and health outcomes among California's Medi-Cal population. So today's um, focus is primarily on those, well, the first change that I'll talk about is for those that are dual eligible. So people that are dual eligible means that they have both Medicare and Medi-Cal. I just put up the health plan cards um, so we know what we're talking about. Medicare is the red, white, and blue card. Medi-Cal is either the white and blue card or they now have a new card with the California state flower on it. But um, individuals that have both of these cards are called dual eligibles because they're duly eligible for Medicare and Medi-Cal. All right, so the first change is January 1st, 2023. And in that change, 
Dual eligibles, or again, people that have both Medicare and Medi-Cal are now required to enroll their Medi-Cal benefits into Medi-Cal managed care plans. This is happening on January 1st. It will take place in San Francisco County. So San Francisco dual eligible residents, those have Medicare and Medi-Cal, will start receiving notices in the mail of this change happening. And on January 1st will be new members of a Medi-Cal managed care plan. Right now, it is voluntary for a dual eligible to join a Medi-Cal managed care plan. So a lot of folks are either in original Medicare or fee-for-service, straight Medicare, or also straight Medi-Cal now. But starting in January, the government, DHS, is requiring um, dual eligibles to enroll the Medi-Cal into a Medi-Cal plan. It's only the Medi-Cal. It does not mean the Medicare benefits have to be enrolled into a Medicare plan. You still have a choice on how you get to receive um, your care, which I'll go over in a little bit. And again, this is part of CalAIM. And this change specifically is also happening throughout the state. It's not only San Francisco County, um, so it is affecting others throughout the state. So the notices that are going out, they will be mailed to individuals that are affected. So the first notice goes out early November. It's the 60 day notice. It's um, a letter from the state informing individuals of this change, why it's happening. There's also a frequently asked questions document that includes a lot of common questions about what it means to enroll Medi-Cal into a managed care plan. In late November, there's also um, choice packets. There are a few choices within San Francisco County where dual eligibles can choose how to receive their Medicare and Medi-Cal benefits. So the choice packets will be mailed and list those choices that are available. Early December is the final 30-day notice as well as a confirmation letter from the health plan if someone has made a choice. Some of the Medi-Cal plans may also make telephone calls out to individuals to let them know of these changes. Um, that I know that Medicare enrollment, open enrollment is also happening right now. So there is a lot of information going out at the same time. So it, it is important to look at notices that you're receiving from the state to make sure you understand of what's going to happen in the next coming months if you are one of these individuals that do have to make this change. So what do I need to do? So again, there's the Medi-Cal plan choice packets. Someone who, everyone that is affected that is required to join a Medi-Cal managed care plan for their Medi-Cal benefits have to either make a choice before January 1st, 2023, or the state will automatically enroll individuals into a plan. So if you don't make a choice, you will be automatically enrolled into a Medi-Cal plan. You will get information from that plan so that in January you understand which plan you're in. But um, we always you know, advise that it's best to make an informed choice and, and pick how you would like to receive your Medi-Cal benefits. So within San Francisco, the two Medi-Cal plan choices are San Francisco Health Plan and Anthem Blue Cross. Um, there's also PACE, the Program of All-Inclusive Care for the Elderly, which is administered by Onlock PACE. I know Natalie will go over PACE later on in this presentation and what sort of choice that is. It is also specifically meant for people that have both Medicare and Medi-Cal benefits um, and is a uh, healthcare program that will integrate those two health insurance programs. This is what the choice form looks like for the most part, the Medi-Cal choice form. Um, they have your name, information. There is um, on the bottom of the page, a list of the available choices. You can either fill out the paper form, you can go online and you can also call healthcare options. Um, but there is many ways to make this choice. 
And again, these are these choice forms will should go out in late November to individuals so that they can make an informed choice of, of how they want to receive their Medi-Cal benefits. So one example of how this change is, is going to affect someone. Joe has both Medicare and Medi-Cal health insurance. Joe is in original Medicare. He does not have a plan attached to his Medicare benefits. And he's also in fee-for-service or straight Medi-Cal. In early November, Joe receives a notice from the state informing him he has to enroll into a Medi-Cal plan. Joe is sent a choice form with available Medi-Cal plan choices for San Francisco, including PACE. John must make a choice or the state will automatically enroll him into a plan on January 1st. Um, so again, I know it's repetitive, but I really do want to stress, you know, looking at materials and, and making an informed choice. There is at least a list of resources um, at the end of the presentation that can also go over some individual question, questions with people if um, they have concerns about what this change will mean in 2023 and how you receive your care. So what this is, what does this mean if you are adult eligible and you're now joining a Medi-Cal plan? So Medicare remains primary. Medicare is the federal health insurance program. It's the red, white, and blue card. And that is primary now, and it will be primary in 2023. That means Medicare always pays first for most services that dual eligibles um, receive from uh, receive for their health care. Medi-Cal is secondary. You know, Medi-Cal most often pays for Medicare premiums, Medicare cost sharing. Um, if someone goes to the doctor, Medicare pays 80% of that and Medi-Cal picks up the remaining 20%. So dual eligibles are not required to pay for services received under their Medicare and Medi-Cal benefits. Healthcare services are free and that will continue in 2023. The Medicare provider relationships also remain the same. If you are seeing a Medicare provider that accepts you and your Medi-Cal, you can continue to see that provider in 2023. The Medicare provider can now just bill the Medi-Cal plan for any Medicare co-payments or cost sharing. There is no change in how these providers are being paid. The only change is where they are billing for their services, but it doesn't change the fact that they can still see their existing patients. The Medi-Cal plan um, is now responsible for some services, such as long-term services and supports. A common um, service there is community-based adult services within the Medi-Cal plan, as well as long-term nursing facility care. If someone needs to go into a nursing home or a skilled nursing facility, that will be the responsibility of the Medi-Cal plan in 2023. Medi-Cal plans also offer transportation to and from medical appointments now. This exists within the fee-for-service or straight Medi-Cal system now, but in 2023, if someone joins a Medi-Cal plan, the transportation will now be the responsibility of that plan. Carved out benefits, that means there are some benefits that are not the responsibility of the new Medi-Cal plan. So if you are a dual eligible with both Medicare and Medi-Cal in 2023, you will still keep getting prescription drugs under the Medicare Part D plan. That's how um, individuals that are in original Medicare and fee-for-service Medi-Cal now are accessing prescription drugs under Medicare Part D and that will continue in 2023. IHSS or in-home supportive services also remains the same. That remains in fee-for-service or straight Medi-Cal. There is no change to these two um, major benefits. So here's another example. Barbara has both Medicare and Medi-Cal and lives in San Francisco. In January, Barbara was required to join a Medi-Cal plan Barbara chose one, and Barbara now has original or fee-for-service Medicare and one of the San Francisco Medi-Cal plans. Barbara has a regular ph physician, Dr. Lee, that she has been seeing for her care and that she likes. She wants to continue to see Dr. Lee. 
2023. Dr. Lee accepts Medicare and Medi-Cal. Can Barbara continue seeing Dr. Lee? So yes, Dr. Lee can continue treating Barbara. Barbara does not have to find a new physician just because her Medi-Cal is now in a health plan. Dr. Lee will bill original Medicare as usual, and then Dr. Lee will bill the new Medi-Cal plan for any remaining payments that Medi-Cal is responsible for. There is no change to how dual eligibles will see their current providers. There is no requirement to join a Medicare plan. There is only the requirement to join a Medi-Cal plan. One common issue that um, may pop up that we just want to make sure everyone's aware of is improper billing. Dual eligibles, like I said before, people that have both Medicare and Medi-Cal are not financially responsible for serv healthcare services that they receive under their Medicare and Medi-Cal. So Medicare providers like doctors and hospitals cannot bill patients with Medi-Cal for any Medicare cost sharing. So that includes Medicare deductibles under Part B, no co-insurance or co-payments. The only cost sharing that a dual eligible may have is through Medicare Part D. But other than that, other than prescription drugs, it is um, illegal for a Medicare provider or a Medi-Cal provider to bill their dual eligible patients for any healthcare services that are covered under these two health insurance programs. So that also means that the Medicare providers don't have to contract with that new Medi-Cal plan to submit claims. Whether or not the Medicare provider is in network with the new Medi-Cal plan means um, nothing in terms of whether or not they can continue to treat their patient. They can continue treating their dual eligible patients like they do today. If you um, do get to, if you do get a bill from a provider, you should contact one of the resources that we have listed so that they can go through, you know, what your rights are and how to advocate um, against these illegal bills. All right, so that was the big change happening in January 2023. Next, I want to just go over the Medi-Cal asset limit changes. This happened in July of 2022. So this has already occurred, um, but we I like to bring it up again to make sure that everyone is aware of this really big change. So in July 2022, the Medi-Cal asset limit significantly increased from $2,000 to now $130,000 for a single person. The asset limit applies to the Medi-Cal programs that serve older adults or people with um, disabilities. So it's the age blind and disabled, Medi-Cal share costs, or the 250% working disabled programs. There is, um, you know, Medi-Cal has an income limit that they require people to meet. And then for older adults, usually over age 65, there's also an asset limit. You have to have less than $130,000 in assets. So cash, savings, car, um, a home, um, many other things, but those are considered assets. And Medi-Cal requires that individuals be beneath um, the asset limit. The asset limit, again, used to be $2,000 for years and it recently increased, which is significant. Now, individuals can save for retirement, security deposit, uh, Whatever it is that someone may need, the asset limit um, increase really can make a huge difference. The um, If someone has an additional family member, such as a spouse, you get an additional $65,000 on top of the $130,000. Eventually, in January of 2024, the asset limit will be eliminated entirely. Medi-Cal will not look at assets for any Medi-Cal um, program. Right now, younger adults are not subject to an asset limit. So in 2024, older adults will also be able to benefit from the fact that there will be no asset test. You do not need to prove that you have less than, you know, 130,000 in cash, savings, um, life insurance, burial insurance, whatever it may be. So that's a really big change that we're excited for. 
And at least for now, um, that asset limit is now 130,000. So what is an asset? Again, it's you know cash, money that someone has in a savings or checking account, stocks, bonds, someone has a second car or a second house that would also count as an asset. Um, Varigal insurance is also counted. The, um, what's important to note about this change in the asset limit is that only the asset limit amount increased. It does not mean that the rules for counting assets change. You know, what is an asset that counts remains the same and what is an asset that doesn't count towards Medi-Cal also remain the same. The income limits also remain the same. Share of cost calculations also remain the same. And these changes only apply to Medi-Cal benefits. It does not apply to um, SSI. It does not apply to CAPI. It does not apply to CalFresh. The changes that I'm talking about today about the asset limit is specific to the Medi-Cal health insurance program only. So just some of the assets that don't count right now already, if you own a home and you live in it, it doesn't count. If you have a car, it doesn't count. Household items, couch, oven, things like that don't count. Same thing with personal effects, personal belongings, clothes, jewelry, that also doesn't count. If someone has an IRA or some other work-related um, uh, pen account or savings account, that also is not counted if you are receiving monthly income or distributions from that account. Some irre irrevocable burial trust also don't count. Um, and then some life insurance policies also don't count. So um, these are the asset limits that already don't count and will continue uh, after the asset limit change. For the Medi-Cal program, again, it's you have to meet both income and asset limits. So now for a single person, you have to be below 1,564 a month in income and then less than 100 at or less than 130,000 in assets. A couple can have up to 2,106 in income and 195,000 in assets as well. So these are the new um, income or new asset limit uh, numbers after July, 2022. The income limits do go up a very small amount each year. So it will go up sometime in March of 2023 by only a small amount. Um, but for now, these are the current income and asset limits. So one example, Lon is 72 years old with Medi-Cal. Since they've uh, turned 65, they've been on Medi-Cal. Normally, they keep less than $2,000 in the bank. That's because the Medi-Cal asset limit was $2,000. You cannot, you could not have more than $2,000 in assets and qualify for Medi-Cal. After the change in July, the asset limit is now $130,000. So in July, Lon received a $10,000 inheritance and deposited it in the bank. Lon notified the county of that inheritance because it was considered income first to make sure that the county is aware. The great news is that after the increase to the asset limit is that Lon can keep Medi-Cal. Lon does not need to spend down that $10,000 to show that they were below the old asset limit of $2,000. $10,000 is significantly less than 130,000, the new asset limit, so Lon continues to keep their Medi-Cal. There is no risk to losing Medi-Cal because of that $10,000 inheritance, which is great. I, under the old rules, Lon would have had to spend that money in on a new couch or whatever it is, but they would have had to spend down, spend down that money and show the county they were back below $2,000. Common questions, will the income limits change? No. Again, this only applies to the asset limit. Does this change the asset limit apply to CalFresh, CalWorks, or SSI? No. Again, this change is specific to individuals who receive 
Medi-Cal directly. Some people, um, if you get SSI, you automatically receive Medi-Cal benefits, but you automatically receive Medi-Cal because you are eligible for SSI benefits. So if you have SSI, you, can, you have to continue to meet the SSI income and asset rules. The SSI asset limits did not change. What happens to Medi-Cal share of cost? That also remains the same. There are no changes to how Medi-Cal share of cost is calculated. There was a recent change um, that was enacted last year where Medi-Cal share of cost calculations will change. It will be a lot more affordable, but that change doesn't take place until 2025. Um, but there is positive news on that front in the coming years. And then lastly, um, just want to flag to update contact information. Right now, Medi-Cal or the state is not terminating or discontinuing eligibility for Medi-Cal due to the COVID public health emergency. Um, so, but eventually that will have to change. We don't know when that will end, but for now, the state, the counties and advocates, we are encouraging individuals to update your contact information. At some point, renewals will be sent out again and you will need to you know, complete the renewal form and return it to the county. So you need to make sure that the county has your updated phone, email, address information um, so that they can mail you this, this renewal packet and whatever forms or information that needs to be um, get that needs to get to you. You can call uh, the San Francisco Medi-Cal office. I listed the phone number. You can email them. There is also a website to reach the Medi-Cal office as well. Um, and this again is really just to make sure that everyone gets the information they need about their Medi-Cal health coverage, either if it's for the enrollment into Medi-Cal plans or renewal packets that are gonna be sent out. Um, updating your contact information is very important. And then lastly, where to go for help. We're still a couple months away from 2023, but if there are questions that come up now or in the future, I've listed a few resources. There's the Aging and Disability Resource Centers um, who provide help to older adults. There's the phone number for English, Spanish, and Portuguese. For those that speak Cantonese, Mandarin, or Tuasanese, it's uh, also listed there. There's HICAP, the Health Insurance Counseling and Advocacy Program. They help dual eligibles answer questions about their Medicare. And then there is also Bay Area Legal Aid, which is a local agency that provides free legal assistance relating to um, various public benefit programs. So all of their information is listed there um, and they can um, you know, help answer questions that come up. If you get a notice you're not supposed to, if you're con confused about a notice that you may receive, these agencies can help answer your questions. I've reached the end of my presentation. I'd like to introduce Natalie Ortega, an enrollment specialist with Unlock Pace. Thank you, Natalie, for being with us this morning. Thanks, Roxana. Thanks for having me. Hello, good morning, everybody. Great to be here. I'll be going over uh, the PACE program, just a high level. And if there are any questions, again, just go ahead and put them in the chat, or we'll, we'll have a Q&A afterwards as well. Seems good. <laughs> Great. All right. So, Unlock Pace. Um, you may have heard of the Pace program before, so I'll be going over it uh, today. And you know, like I said, any questions, we'll we'll save for the end. So, a bit of background on Unlock. Um, it was founded in 1971. The goal was to help seniors to age independently. We wanted to create an alternative to a nursing home. Our founder, Dr. William D., was a public health dentist, and he worked for the San Francisco Public Health System. 
he was exploring hiring foreign health professionals, professionals so he wanted to employ thousands of immigrants um, that had permission to come into the U.S. from Asian countries. And Mary Louise Anstack, our other co-founder, uh, she worked on trying to create a nursing home for San Francisco's Chinatown. So she was hired to build one. But after visiting the nursing homes, you know, she didn't really like the setting. She wanted to do something different. So instead, with Dr. William B., they co-founded Onla to have the services of a nursing home while keeping our seniors remaining at home. So what is PACE? What does that stand for? It's a program of all-inclusive care for the elderly. We're a full-service health program. Like I said before, the goal is to help our seniors stay at home, but safely with our services. And so our team of healthcare professionals will create a personalized care plan for each participant. And those plans do include a wide range of services, such as medical services, social services, and even home care. And so we have replicated PACE uh, in 31 states across 133 PACE organizations, 264 PACE centers in total in the country. And in 2020, we did serve about 1,800 seniors in our three Bay Area county programs. So we do provide high quality outcomes under five points. Uh, the care team is you know, really dedicated to our members they provide the services and a lot of coordinated care. So it's very much hands-on. Uh, we do have better preventative care. So a lot of folks, you know, might come into us in a space where they feel, you know, they're still really healthy, they're still really good, but preventative care is essential. We try to make sure that they stay in that level and that they can stay remaining at home at that healthy level. We do try to reduce hospital admissions because of that personalized care, the coordinated care. There's a lot of attention on our members. Um, so we have seen 24% lower hospitalization rate in those beneficiaries. We do also have high rates of community residents. So 95% of our participants live at home instead of a nursing home. And that's really the goal here. You know, We want people to feel at home and feel safe. We also have a high caregiver satisfaction. So 96% of the family members that work with PACE um, you know, do recommend for the caregivers at home. So what do we cover, right? All the medical care, so primary care, um, you know, any specialist care, specifically dental, vision, and hearing, transportation, day center activities. Uh, we do meals as well, home care. And so all the Medicare and Medi-Cal services that would be covered are also covered through case. Any additional care that might be determined necessary by the care team would also be covered. And so just one thing to note here is that the services do have to be received through OnLock. So going back to that question that we had about the doctors, uh, with PACE, it remains the same. When you join the PACE program, you do have to change primary care physicians to one of our in-house primary care specialists. So who can join the PACE program? To qualify, you'd have to be over the age of 55, live in one of our service areas, in this case, San Francisco County, and need a nursing home level of care, as well as be able to live safely in the community. So those last two points is where our intake assessments come in. And I'll go over the process of enrollment here on the next slide. We break it down to four steps. So the first step is a consultation with myself, an enrollment representative. And then the next step would be that eligibility review to make sure that the need for nursing home level of care is there and that the person is safe in their community. So once that review is completed, it gets submitted to the state for approval. Third step is where the healthcare team comes into play. So a care plan is developed, appointments are set up, and then a final enrollment conference is scheduled. On the fourth step, this would be the participant is enrolled for the first day of the following month after the enrollment conference is completed. So it can be a bit of a lengthy process. On average, uh, the enrollments take about four to six weeks. And we can you know, continue to see how we can support during that period. These locations are the ones in San Francisco. So we have four sites, five centers. The one at Bush Street is our largest center with two 
um, adult day centers there. And then we have the Institute on Aging on Surrey Boulevard that provides our case program. We have the one on 30th Street and then our original house relocation. So how can I join Unlock Case through Cal AIM? Um, that great presentation that Tiffany gave us explained that Cal AIM is going to be providing us with the option of Unlock Case. So it's going to be in your enrollment packet, that packet that was discussed that will be coming in November. And if you'd like to select Unlock Case as your plan, you would just choose that bubble. And then Unlock would reach out to contact you for the enrollment process. When you do select on that case on the form, you do also have to select the backup option. So it would be either the SF health plan or the Anthem, just in case the enrollment doesn't go through with case. And there are gonna be additional instructions on the packet uh, for this selection. And just one thing to note, um, while this transitional period is an option for when to enroll with case, on that case does accept enrollments all year round. So if at any, time you decide that you want to explore the PACE program with us, you can do so um, without having to wait for the open enrollment period. Okay. That would be it for me. Any questions? Thanks, Natalie. Are there any questions about Unlock PACE for Natalie? I don't see any questions yet. Okay. All right. No more questions, it looks like. All right. So thank you to Tiffany and Natalie for their presentations and their time this morning. As a reminder, if you receive Calum enrollment notices in the mail or have any additional questions about your Medi-Cal enrollment, the ADRC here at 30th Street Senior Center is a great resource for you. You can stop by in person or give them a call between 8.30 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday through Saturday. Thanks to all of you for joining us this morning. We hope to see you at another 30th Street event soon. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Sylvia. <laughs>